Okay. And I want to do a screen share. Thank you all for being here as well. Thank you. Thank you. I know I bugged you all a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Honey. And I'll probably bug you some more. That's how us librarians do. Um, I am a fangirl. Have seen you at the library many, many times. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for right. inviting us. Absolutely. The So you muted yourself. All right, I am about to open the doors. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Yeah. All right, here we go and it's show time. Hello everybody, welcome. And hello, YouTube friends. Welcome, everyone. We're going to get started right away. And I want to thank you all for being here tonight. And we are here to talk with a, a panel of folks from Core Magazine on their new publication, How Not to Call the Police Forever. Forever. <laughs> Forever. Mm. And we want to welcome you to the unceded land of the Ohlone tribal people and acknowledge the many Ohlone tribe, Ramutush Ohlone tribal groups and families as the rightful stewards in the lands in which we reside. SFPL is committed to uplifting the names of these communities and providing uh, factual and useful information about first person, land rights, lots of reading lists. We love to make them at our library. And I'll put a link in the chat box. It has a list to all of these things we'll talk about tonight, as well as links to Poor Magazine and Poor Press and anything that they talk about tonight that comes up that I can link back to, I will do my best to make that happen. And uh, we wanna let everyone know in the library community that we are not a neutral institution at the library, that we stand in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement as well as are in support of our Asian American and Pacific Islander communities um, with the recent and um, maybe not so recent, always uh, uh, Asian hate crimes that have been happening, um, both reported and invisible. Um, the library stands in solidarity with our communities, neighbors, colleagues, and uh, those distressed and hurt by these attacks. We are determined to work with our city and communities to recognize and dismantle the discrimination and violence um, of these events have caused. We also want to acknowledge uh, these events are complicated by the entanglement of anti-Black and anti-Asian stereotypes and the reporting of these violent acts. And that anti-Black and anti-Asian racism both uphold white supremacy and we are all harmed by these racial structures. Our library has a racial equity commitment and our community has been working very hard on all of this. And um, I will again put some more links into our box and you can check out all sorts of reading lists about this. Uh, there is a pandemic still happening and our libraries are trickling open, which we are excited about. So 13 libraries on board now for contactless pickup, um, but definitely protect my library family out there working in the streets and all of our family and friends working in the streets and continue to wear your mask. Earth Day celebration with Jane Kim of Inkdwell Studio, who if you've been down High Street, you've noticed the humongous Monarch mural and it's gorgeous. So come hear about their work. And now I'll just breeze through a couple of library events we have coming up author, poet, essayist, cultural critic, Hanif Abderqweep, in conversation with Ray Lynn Barnes and talking about his latest book, A Little Devil in America. Uh, this is a partner with Museum of African Diaspora, April 28th, 6 p.m. Um, Edible Food Recovery, part of Climate Action Month, April 24th. We are still celebrating our One City, One Book campaign, which is our largest literary campaign. And we are honoring Chanel Miller and her book, Know My Name, which is about her uh, sexual assault, rape on the Stanford campus. 
and um, her subsequent dealings with the judicial system, the shame, and her family, and being a survivor. So we still have a few more events. I encourage you all to check out the book and come to our Monday night events. And let's see. I also want to hit on this one, which is an organization called Mere Memoirs, who will be holding a virtual healing circle for survivors of childhood sexual assault happening April 20th. And then in May, we head into our AAPI celebration and um, Heritage Month, lots of events. And I'm going to quickly breeze through these ones. Uh, the author and artist of Tresse graphic novels, also a now option of Netflix, will be in the house, um, joining us from Holland and the Philippines. So a little silver lining of pandemic world and going virtual. We'll also have a panel, uh, Art as a Vehicle for Social and Political Change, May 8th. And lots and lots of great things. Uh, Lewis Gordon, Freedom, Justice, and Decolonization, a partnership with Before Columbus Foundation. All right, and some fun, um, some great San Francisco history too. Aaliyah Voles will be in the virtual library talking about her book, Home Baked, My Mom, Marijuana, and the Stoning of San Francisco. This is a really fun book and really great history. All right, so as I was uh, telling the, the group of Poor Magazine, I am a bit of a fangirl and have been working at our library since 1999. And they have been around since before then and gracing the library with their presence and their knowledge and their writing. It's amazing. I'm so honored to have them all here. Poor Press is the poor people-led publishing arm the grassroots, homeless, and poor people-led movement known as Poor Magazine, which has been dedicated to publishing and producing the books, art, education, and culture of very low, no income, homeless, indigenous, disabled, and incarcerated youth, adults, and elders since 1996. And without further ado, I would like to turn it over to Poor Magazine. Thank you for being here. So we start with our bio. I am the Black Cripple. Speaking about my Black disabilities have been shot by police. I just tell you, the more we see you, and we will always never call the police. Root. Muteado silencio presente y me alegro. Mis palabras son mis balas. Mi lápiz es mi arma. Muteado silencio. My words are my bullets. My pen is my gun. And sit back and relax, because we're going to drive by your mind. E. No nonprofit organizer could speak for the Pope. No college professor can speak for the Pope. I can speak for the Pope because I'm still I'm on the Pope. Count my head, I'm on the broke on this block. You see me because I own less than you. You diss me, he slums my frustration, my his thirst, my starvation, my his wants, mine, his tears, mine. Mine. This person fears mine. They're with me all the time. The president is mine, and neither is his government. They strip or present the class hate I resent. I don't count the institutions of power. I don't count to a racist cow. Picture me not once worshiping a flag, as long as they continue to deny the slag. No news reporter can speak full of Pope. No social worker can speak full of Pope. I can speak full of Pope because I'm still among the Pope. Count my hair, I'm on the broke on this block. You see me, D. Allen, D. P. Sofa, California. Come, come on, D. I am that poverty scholar, that houseless mama, that houseless daughter. 
I'm a poverty scholar. All those people you don't want to see, never want to be, look away from me because we invisibilize, you see, but we in your city. I'm a poverty scholar. I rock my jailhouse attire, not because orange is the new black. Don't believe that crack. Hollywood will sell you that. It's because me and my poor mama did jail time for the poverty crime of being unhoused in this occupied indigenous holler. Yeah, I'm a poverty scholar, the melanin challenged daughter of a strong Afro vote equal mama for without whom there would be no me, a mama soltera and a welfare queen. And I will add this to you, all the beautiful peoples who are with us today. There is no safe in a polite state. There is no safe in a polite state. Mm. Leroy. So the book, How to Not Call the Police Ever, is rooted in poverty scholarship. As poverty indigenous scholars, our theory is our life. Poverty scholarship is also survival theory. Launched by us, police terrorize houses, disabled indigenous black and brown people at Poor Magazine, a movement not an organization, a movement living without police. Yes, right on, Brother Leroy. And yes, for those folks, Poor Magazine is poor people, indigenous people-led movement. Uh, we live what we teach every day in the stolen land. We fight the racist poor lies. And all of us have been profiled, harassed, and stolen, terrorized by these poor lies, these pigs. While we fight, we also build and manifest solutions. This book is the documentation of the solutions we have been living and going through 25 years as we practice our hopefulness. And homefulness. Homefulness, a homeless people's solution to homelessness. Guess what? Us poor people who don't got a pot to piss in or a roof to call our own can actually build our own solutions because as my brother Leroy said, our solutions, our theory is our life. So yeah, we're building a homeless people's solution because when you talk about polite terror, you also also have to talk about the terror of eviction, displacement, and gentrification. So when us poor people build our own solutions, they never include polis. We have a poor people's radio. We have houses that we're building for houseless families right now. And we have housed six residents already, myself and Dee and Mudiago and his mama and Israel. And we have a liberation school. And guess what? Teachers and scholars and liberators out there, we are not mandated reporters because we refuse to engage with the state who believes the test and arrest and incarcerate of us is the way to solve our problems. And guess what? Anti-social work and Case Mangler has nothing to do with lifting up and living in solutions rooted in love. So that's homefulness, Decolonize Academy, Poor People's Radio, and many more actual movements that we are living into that never engage with the state. But I don't want to give anybody on this Zoom call the wrong idea. This is extremely hard to do because as poor, colonized, traumatized, houseless and indigenous peoples living in this stolen land, we hurt each other all the time. Hard but necessary. Okay. So it's a constant battle for us to hold each other, love each other and live into this polish free liberation movement. So we're gonna ask because tonight, as we sit here in this Zoom digital street, 
Our brothers and sisters are out in different parts of occupied Yalamu, uh, lifting up Roger Allen, killed by racist ass polis in Daly City, lifting up Dewante Wright, killed by racist, racist ass polis in Minneapolis and Brooklyn Center, lifting up George Floyd, killed by more racist white terror in that part of occupied Turtle Island, and so many more. And so we're gonna start tonight with a prayer vigil because we need to honor our hearts in all of this as well. And we need to lift up our ancestors for guidance, for liberation and for collective healing as we walk into these solutions. This is something we practice at Poor Magazine as well, which is to constantly actually honor, lift up, learn from and listen carefully to our ancestors, for without whom there would be no us. So I'm gonna ask to start tonight in a good way. I don't know if Sister Karina is there yet. We have the blessing and the honor at Porn Magazine and homefulness of walking alongside our First Nations um, warriors of land liberation from Segorite Land Trust from West Berkeley Shell Mound, from Indians organizing for change. Because if you are humble and walking in liberation, you don't go onto people's land without asking permission first. So as in pan-Indigenous and poverty scholars, that's what we did. And we have the blessing of having Karina as part of our family, part of our liberation warriors. And to start tonight in a good way, we're gonna be lifting up a prayer which is in the beginning of the book, How to Not Call Polis Ever, uh, that actually not only blesses the book, but blesses all of our ancestors in this way. And so we, I don't know, is Karina, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Beautiful, thank you. Uh, good evening, thank you so much, Tiny. Thank you to Poor Magazine and Homefulness for the amazing work that they do. Thank you for the San Francisco Public Library for lifting up this amazing work uh, done by these warriors uh, of the land. Um, I want to thank uh, thank everybody for inviting me. I'm so sorry that my camera's not working. I've got uh, issues with technical stuff, and I'm hoping to get that fixed. But um, I'm going to offer a prayer um, uh, before I read this one, um, just because I think that we're in this place right now where we're seeing this increased violence of our young people, our, our, uh, our people of color that are being uh, continuously murdered and we're holding that in our hearts right now. We're seeing our Asian brothers and sisters being uh, continuously harassed and, um, and violated in amazingly crazy ways. Um, we've had elders that have passed recently um, that were warriors at Standing Rock um, in our community in San Francisco. Um, and we're all kind of feeling that heaviness. And so I wanna acknowledge that right now that we have this heaviness and we're here in this virtual land because uh, we're facing a pandemic um, and that we're all dealing with that. So with that, um, I also want to acknowledge that San Francisco is original name is Yolamu and it is the territory of the Ramatush Ohlone Nation um, that still exists today. And uh, the violence that happened in our territories um, were the first part of gentrification that happened and occurred here. And the invisibilization of our people uh, still exists today. Grandmothers and grandfathers, creators and ancestors, we ask you to come in from all four directions to lift us up, to heal our hearts, to ask you to open up our minds and our ears and our hearts to the work that's happening to heal right now. We're asking you to help us to find a better way to be human beings again, to remember our rightful place, the place that we're supposed to be in this circle of creation. I ask you grandmothers and grandfathers for protection of the people that are standing on the front lines, the front lines against all the isms, the front lines of poverty, the front lines of oppression. We ask grandmothers and grandfathers to take care of our relatives that are behind the walls. 
We ask that you take care of those ones that are behind the walls that are in prison, behind the false walls of, and borders, those that are behind the walls of addiction and isolation. We ask grandmothers and grandfathers to protect uh, uh, all of our young people and ask them to give them good hearts and strong minds. Ask them for, ask for courage for them as they stand up in this world. We ask grandmothers and grandfathers that we create allegiance between elders and young people to do this good work, to create a world that is abundant for all of us. We ask that we remember the abundance of the lands that we're on, the abundance that fed us and clothed us and gave us water and shelter, and that there was no such thing as homelessness or hunger 200 years ago. We ask grandmothers and grandfathers to protect the airs that we breathe for the next seven generations and beyond, to give us fresh water to drink for the next seven generations and beyond, to give us good land to grow our medicines and our foods for the next seven generations and beyond, to protect our elders, our medicine carriers, our warriors, our, our uh, people that are working in the hospitals. We pray for the sick right now, not only for those with COVID, but other diseases that are afflicting them. We pray for the health of those. As we look into this virtual world and, and on the social media, we ask, see all of these people asking for prayer. We lift up our voices in prayer for all of them, asking and taking care of whatever they need. We ask grandmothers and grandfathers for the words of this wonderful book to reach the hearts and minds of, of those that need to hear it so that we can create a sustainable change for the future generations. We ask that we continue to stand up right and do the work that you ask us to do on this earth right now and to protect all of us as we go forward. So, Thank you, Karina. Um, I want to make sure that people understand and overstand that when we talk again about pro-life terror, that it didn't start yesterday. It didn't start with George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, uh, Rahim, uh, and so many more. It didn't start with Idris Steli, and it didn't start with Luis Dimitri Gungara Pat, and it didn't start with Kayla Moore, and it didn't start in the 21st or the 20th century. It began with the original theft of this indigenous territory. And again, as we move forward, um, I want people to understand and understand that that is one of the pieces that we lift up as poor and houseless and indigenous landless peoples uh, is that these are all connected. So we're going to honor ancestors of the polite state because as we say, you can't be safe in the polite state. Um, there are sadly too many to mention tonight. But again, we're spending a chunk of our time on this honoring because we cannot move forward without the multiple strands of prayer, of love, and of listening. Um, our ancestors have many messages and lessons for us always. So again, what you're looking at is the altar that we have at the sacred land as houseless indigenous people call homefulness. And as you can see, there's all kinds of folks and some of the pictures fall off and then we have to put them on again. So that isn't even everybody. And it is just a small piece of the many ancestors that we try to walk with and listen to every day. Um, but we're going to be honoring the ancestors today specifically that are talked about in the book. Um, we are blessed to have uh, in this book, uh, the story of Kayla Moore told by her sister Maria. Uh, we are blessed to have the story of Luis Dimitri Gungara Pat told by uh, their brother um, and many more personal stories. We are the impacted people. That's who this book is written by, for, and about. And so again, we're gonna lift all of our ancestors up in prayer in the tradition of Ifa, Oduba, uh, as well as the Shambhala tradition with our sister from Poor Magazine, Pearl Ubungin. Uh, Pearl, are you there? 
Hi. I'm Hi. here. Hey. Hey. <laughs> okay. So um, we're just basically going to ask people to, well, what we say is we say moju bayu, love and respect to you. Mm -hmm. um, after we name the ancestors, we say it three times. Um, we'll be naming again a small portion of the victims of Polish terror, lifting them up in liberation and prayer, and then sending them onto their spirit journey. We just lost another uh, brother, uncle, father, son, Duante, right? And again, lifting him up in so much prayer. So we're spending this time and we're going to be saying their name and then saying Mojubayo, love and respect to you. And those of you who are in the Zoom with us, please also bring your ancestors into the room. You don't have to say them out loud, uh, but please bring them in with you as any of us have so many things to learn from the folks who have been stolen away from us, from the cultures and the languages who are no longer in, inside of our communities, intentionally separated by capitalism. Um, and then some of us will be saying a little bit more about some of the ancestors who are um, written about in the book. So I'm gonna turn it over to begin this right now. And then um, Pearl and I will go over these, lifting up these names and then we'll go to Leroy and others. Okay. It's asking people to take in a deep breath. Thank you, Creator, for another day of, day of life. Thank you, ancestors um, brought in from so many directions, um, specifically calling out the ancestor uh, survivors who are mentioned and thought about right now in all of this time of uprising and change and so much pain. Um, we're gonna call out their names Starting with, go ahead, Pearl. Brianna Taylor. Mojubayo, love and respect to you. George Floyd. Mojubayo, love and respect to you. Stephen Taylor. Mojubayo, love and respect to you. Leroy. Taylor Moore. Love and respect to you. Moju Bayo, love and respect to you. Luis Demetrio Gongarapat. Love and respect to you, Moju Bayo. Lisa? Lisa. I don't know if Lisa Ganser's there. She's going to. Yvonne McDonald. Moju Bayo, love and respect to you. You want a right. Moju Bayo, love and respect to you. Leroy? I, uh, I think it's he, he says. Moju Bayo, love and respect to you. Um, in these, in these uh, ancestors, again, there's many stories, but I want to ask Sister Pearl, to also, and sorry, Alexand, Alejandro, uh, what am I saying? Quintero or Quinto, say it, Mama. Angelo Quinto. Angelo Quinto. 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 Love and respect to you. Um, can you talk a little bit about Angelo? Yes, Angelo was having um, what they're calling a mental health crisis at home. Uh, this was around Christmas time last year, and the police came and basically did a knee on the neck style killing. Mm -hmm. He lived in Antioch. This happened in his mother's bedroom. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the, the connections that we have from our work with the Gongara Pat family is that the one of the police killers of Luis 
Officer Malone left before he was reprimanded. He left SFPD before he was reprimanded and he was hired by the Antioch PD. So this is the same department. Would you buy your love and respect to you? Lisa, can you talk a little bit about Yvonne? Yes, uh, I am coming to you from uh, so-called Olympia, Washington, which is uh, the land of the Medicine Creek Treaty Tribes and specifically the Squaxin Island peoples. And here a few years ago, uh, Yvonne McDonald, who was a, um, in her early 50s, was a graduate of Evergreen, Black woman, uh, was found dead here in Olympia. And it was never investigated. Um, it's pretty obvious what happened that a city employee uh, hit her with a street sweeper. Uh, that person was never investigated. And there's never been justice for Yvonne's family. Um, and yeah, she was a poverty scholar and a really awesome person and an auntie. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm friends with her niece, Talana. And uh, I've learned a lot about Yvonne McDonald after her death. And I'm sending so much love to her family. Moju, buy your love and respect to you. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Leroy, do you want to talk about Isaias Contreras? Yeah, Isaias is a um, Latino artistic youth. Um, he also has a brother with CP. Um, he, what, what I know about is that he um, called the police and the police came and shot him and um, removed the parents from the apartment but left her, his um, brother with CP in the place alone. So um, now the, the Latino um, community in LA is, um, you know, trying to get justice I get the real record from the police and we, we know about that, that kind of struggle. Um, unfortunately, I just have to be honest, is that um, the two rallies that they had, um, you know, Black Lives Matter wasn't there, but you know, um, the family was there, which is more important than um, the movement. The family was there and the uh, Latino community has his, his back and um, his lawyer has an autistic um, son. So his lawyer is um, committed to um, disability um, justice or, or, you know, at least bringing disability into the case and never to lose it. So. That's, that's, that's what I have. Um, you, United Disability Voices, which I sit on the board. So Judy has been involved with the case since the beginning, 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 beginning. That's still going on and they're still fighting for justice. Oh. Well, you buy your love and respect to me. Buy love and respect to you. Okay, um, Pearl, can you talk about Luis Dimitri Bungara Pat? Um, yeah, we were just with the family on April 7th. That was the, it, it was the five year anniversary of his, of his killing. Um, over this time, I've become very close to his brother, Jose. And there was just a feeling of great, great sadness at the altar. Um, he was killed at 18th and shot well in the mission. And as we know, you know, all of the issues are, are interconnected, right? So he had lost work, he had lost his housing, he became homeless. And by being homeless, he was criminalized. Um, a neighbor called, and we know this all too familiar scene where 
within 29 seconds, he was gone. And he was murdered in a brutal way because he was down and, and the final shot was execution style to his head. I wanna add that for those of you who may not know about this case, uh, many people in occupied Yolamu do know, but it's very important to understand again, as we talk about land liberation and gentrification, as I call it, uh, if Luis had not been evicted from his apartment, he would not have been killed. And we know this as evicted and displaced people. Um, and there's often a lot of talk about, you know, police terror without talking about eviction terror without talking about the fact that displacement kills and eviction is elder and child abuse as Poor Magazine has proven, and that these are very much connected. This indigenous man who crossed these false borders to come here and work in the kitchen of rich gentrifuckers in Frisco was killed because of what I call the violence of exposure. Uh, any of you who happened to go through a mental health crisis or even a bad day because he wasn't having a mental health crisis and he was doing what he always did. But someone wanted to help him. Oh, the homeless person needs some help even though he didn't ask for help. He was just doing what he always does. So essentially when we know that these 311 calls oftentimes lead to 911 calls and I wanna lift up the fact that they're trying right now and putting in place an alternative uh, to police calls. We know that as well as the powerful work of MH First over in um, Occupied Uchin, Oakland and Sacramento. But sadly, there are still people who don't wanna see us on the street. And so they perpetrate the violence of sweeps equating our body with trash and try to help us, which is more savior industrial complex moves that really end up in our death, arrest and testing. Um, so we want to move, close this moment out. Um, and then with our sister Kayla, who is a powerful, beautiful transgender sister who was killed by Berkeley Polis. Um, Leroy, can you talk about Kayla? Yeah, Kayla Moore lives in Berkeley. As a matter of fact, her family um, came to Berkeley because of disability services. Because they thought that um, Kayla would, would um, grow in the disability services in the disability community. Um, Kayla, you know, and Lisa, you know, help me out here if I get this wrong. But um, what, 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 what I've heard and I've been close to the case is Kayla lived downtown Berkeley and, and um, Kayla's um, um, personal care attendant was there at Kayla's home. Um, I don't know who called police, but the police came in, um, tackled Kayla, um, called Kayla all kinds of names, put Kayla in a um, horse, horse kind of um, jacket, and um, Kayla stopped breathing. So that's and it's all the the um, justice campaign has been going on for um, years now in Berkeley. Um, Lisa ain't knowing me did music and artwork for it. Um, Berkeley Top Watch is one of the main players that's. Um, that had taught um, the lawyers about disability and about transgender issues. Um, the lawyers were kind of um, clueless about that. So um, we talked to them about that. And um, 
you know, the fight continues. Um, Kayla's sister, Maya Moore, excellent um, activist in Berkeley, and she's always on the ground, you know, getting support. So if I left anything out, Lisa, please add to it. Yeah, I, I'm really glad that you brought up the Berkeley Cop Watch. Berkeley Cop Watch published uh, in partnership with a bunch of organizers um, and movement builders, uh, and a uh, people's investigation into the wrongful death, into the murder of Kayla Moore. And so if you go to the Berkeley Cop Watch page, which I know that we're getting some support in the chat so you can learn more, but you could uh, read about that. And a people's investigation is an investigation outside of, of the cop narrative. So outside of the police narrative, there was a very in-depth uh, and, and that kind of that sort of investigation could be happening every single time that someone is killed, someone is murdered by the police, and it serves as a good uh, example. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll read this. I'll read the uh, words that are on this art that's right here. It says, we remember Kayla Moore, poet, singer, sister, daughter, genius, friend, black trans woman with a mental health diagnosis, killed by Berkeley police in her own home. They tried to blame her death on obesity. Shame on the Berkeley Police Department. Yeah, you can't blame us for being fat after you kill us. <laughs> it's like, it's another thing that cops do. But um, thank you, Leroy, for inviting me back in. Pass it off. Mojuvayo, love and respect to you. Mojuvayo, love and respect to you. Mojuvayo, love and respect to you. <sighs> Taking a deep breath in. I want to apologize to all the other ancestors that we're not talking about today. And for any of you who are with us and are sitting with us and there's ancestors of polarized terror, gun violence, poverty, eviction, displacement, please name them, put them in your hearts, put them on your altars as we do. Because again, there are many lessons to be learned from all of our ancestors not just to protest, but also yeah. to listen, to also liberate, and to also change. Um, Leroy, go ahead. Yeah, so one of the many ways we manifest this liberation to never call the police is through our prayers, our, our honor of our ancestors and our indigenous poor people that circle, one of these is the family council and the elephant council. Tonight we will hear poor mamas, uncles, aunties, youth, elders, and ancestors' voices featured in the book. Are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, so the elephant council is a poor, Indigenous peoples traumatize people's accountability. Circle, which includes a redefinition of the silently violent Western white supremacist notion of security and enables us to hold each other through trauma and institute a true definition of interdependent safety. Now, let's be honest, over 70% of police calls are petty and can be solved without police. We manifest, we manifest this as a poor and police Trump terrorize peoples because we live without ever engaging, which is very hard because we do hurt each other. And I just want to add on to Auntie Frances. Auntie Frances is a powerful warrior, one of our uh, co-founders of Homefulness and a member of our Elephant Council, a teacher at our school, a poverty scholar, an author. Check out her books at poorpress.net, um, as well as a teacher in people school. Um, I urge people to check out people school. It happens twice a year. And it's where we teach folks with race and class privilege about the concept of radical redistribution and community reparations. Um, we can't do this without 
that movement happening. And we as poor people teach wealth hoarders about a different way to live. These are all interlinked. This is how we can be doing this land liberation movement. Uh, but again, the Elephant Council is a concept that is very hard to do. It's very hard for poor people who are already hurting to hold other folks who are broken. But we know that there is a lie of safe in the polarized state. And I just wanna bring us back again to that message um, as we listen carefully to our ancestors uh, that there was nothing unsafe about Luis Dimitri Gwangara Pat being on 18th Street in San Francisco, houseless. There was nothing unsafe about Kayla Moore being in her apartment, uh, needing a, with her family calling for a well check, innocently expecting just to find out how she was. There was nothing unsafe with Isaias Cervantes. Uh, what there was, was a crisis that we all have. And so this is also a different way to live. Um, I want to make sure we are, you know, we should be spending all night on this, frankly, but the San Francisco Library only gave us an hour. Uh, so I also want to remind people that we'll be doing our workshop, How to Not Call Pro-Life Ever, which is a full workshop tomorrow night at 545 as part of the Imagining Abolition Conference. Um, and I want to turn it over to, um, to my brother, JV. Joey Villarreal, who is another co-author of this powerful book. Um, we only have about three minutes, and I hope you made it in there, JV. We all digital divided folks, yeah. by the way. So bear with us. We ghetto scholars trying to figure out these digital streets. JV? Yes. Yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Oh, perfect. So the, these are pieces of my art that I did while I was at the concentration camp in Pelican Bay Shoe. Um, you know, just quick note, the Supreme Court ruled that it was unconstitutional with their um, colonizer constitution, that it was unconstitutional to hold us in solitary confinement, but they held us there for years and for, in some cases, decades. So this is uh, some of the work that I did while I was in the concentration camp, and they held me there for a decade, uh, a decade of torture. And, and you know, and I used that that decade of torture in order to create this art. And th these, each piece of art is a bullet. You know, this is a bullet and, um, you know, it's a weapon. And, you know, and, and I created this art in order to help um, raise consciousness amongst the, my fellow prisoners, as well as those folks outside of the prison gates who, um, you know, were in solidarity and are in solidarity with uh, the captives held in the concentration camp. So my art is, um, it's, 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 you know, revolutionary art. It speaks for liberation, for the oppressed nations, for the Chicano nation, and for all oppressed peoples in these false U.S. borders. So these are, um, you know, um, these pieces of art are also in my book, Aslan Realism, Chicano Revolutionary Art from Pelican Bay Shoot. So these pieces, um, you know, many of these pieces I sent out to Poor Magazine as well, and you could see them on the website. They were also included, um, you know, in this beautiful book, uh, this book that teaches not to call the, 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 the polis the pigs, because, you know, um, as we see when they arrive, no matter what it's for, um, you know, oftentimes um, brown and black folks don't make it out alive. So, you know, we rather interact with our own, you know, community um, rather than uh, the pigs because, um, you know, it doesn't turn out good for us. We either go to jail or we go to the mortuary. So, you know, this art right here is speaking through that pain. It's speaking through the pain of, um, you know, of um, being criminalized. You know, it's speaking through the pain of the school to prison pipeline. It's speaking through the pain of colonization that we all face, um, some more than others. Um, but it's also speaking from the concentration camp. And, and as you see these pieces of art, each piece is deliberate. Every single um, aspect of this piece of art is very deliberate and has a very strong message. Um, I'm speaking about the criminalization of brown, mostly brown and black people 
um, as well as the kids in the cages. We can't forget the children. And I and and I right here that, that you're seeing it shows an ice um, a, an ice pig, and um, and you know and 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 it's a quick you know um, realization that we um, are all you know um, um, held in a cage. You know, it's a bigger cage than the kids, um, but we need to get them kids out as well. And this artwork speaks about freeing all people, all political prisoners, and all oppressed people, brown and black. Thank you very much. Ashe. And remember that media and authorship is not just words, but it's visual, it's performance, it's poetry, and it's prayer. Uh, JV's work is powerful. You can also hear him on Poor People's Radio. That's KEXU 96.1 FM, Free Aslan. That's our Poor People's Radio station out here, poormagazine.org slash radio. D. Now we will hear from other impacted polis, terrorized mamas, uncle, poverty, scholar voices with their contributions to this powerful book. And I must remind you, each person participating after I speak, give one minute each. Christy? Hey. Hey, family. Hey, thank you for having me. All right, so the poem's called Stolen. Um, so I'll just start it. You take our babies, marking them before they can walk. Child stained with reflection, part of a problem. Stolen from them the opportunity to do the eternal work. Years after the corrupted system repeatedly broke them down to the core of transparent cries for help. The trauma left behind. Stolen brown baby criminalized. We will keep telling history through your pressed eyes. And though you at 12 understood the life and disadvantage of having colored skin, you stayed woke to the circumstances. You shaped your mindset and were capable of change. No brother gets left behind. All hands on deck, boots to the ground. A brown brother's struggle for freedom at last finally found. 20, 20 years later, once again, you fall victim to systematic racism, draped from head to feet with their biased ass opinion. We resist against those who you speak with courage to denounce. Wrong place, wrong time. No chance to draw that line. Stolen was the day your freedom was denied across the board through the mouth of the beast himself. The beast that your mama read to you about and those stories written and carved upon her skin, embedded into our bloodline before the concept of understanding. The Malinche of our present time, taking and breaking our sangre across the board. Moments stolen from the moments, from the streets where you were meant to informally meant and that line to bend. Stolen brown baby, right from your mama's arms. The struggle is real. You've been marked. We don't entertain. We use our we use our given skills to break that chain. No gavel, no 12 nefarious souls, no subsequent exploited badge, stolen baby. You are but a mirrored image of years of hate. Stolen baby. You are but a mirrored image of years of unjust treatment. Stolen baby. You are but a mirror image that will be shattered of the systematic oppression. Stolen baby. Your struggle will continue on roads painted and tainted color to brown freedom. Stolen baby. Woo -wee! Yeah. Oh, beautiful family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. That, that is in the book. Um, calling out Audrey Candy Corn and Zaire. Are you in the house? Yes, we're in the house. Right. Um, we're going to bring up your piece. Uh, Maya, do you have it? No, Bringing it up right now. Okay, cool. Oh, you also have the book, though, too, huh? You good. So we probably only can do, like, the first paragraph because of time. But go for it, Mama. I don't see anything. It's on the screen right now. But you can also read it out of the book if you got it. I um okay I do have the book but I couldn't find it inside of the book so I'm trying to work this all right all right I see okay West Oakland Chronicles boy on boy male incest and the decriminalization on the basketball courts, currently used as a parole precinct in the back of Cole School. 
next door neighbor. Three young males, no older than 11 years old, were caught by the other children and the neighborhood. They began to scream and run around in disbelief for what they had witnessed on the courts. Someone was crying. It was the child that had gotten violated. I went to ask the young man what was wrong. The children spoke up for him. The word rape was being used. To my left were three women. I said, ladies, are you all aware of this current situation? One of our children has been violated. You want me to keep going, Tiny? Uh, we have to run out of time, but <laughs> it's beautiful. Is that, all right. Um, it, it's in the middle of the paragraph. And oh, yeah. so Hold it up. Um, I can keep going. Um, da, 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 da. Um, one of our children has been violated. They be at your house all the time. One of the women turned her head. The other said, it's not my business. And the last woman said, let their parents deal with it. I walked back to the children's circle. Apparently, the little boy's own cousin, who he lived with, or was visiting, was doing something inappropriate to, a, to another neighbor boy, pinning him down by the head. So I'm gonna stop there. This is not a piece that I would have chose in particularly, um, but there it is. And um, this is basically a piece that's really touching because um, if you were to get the book and read this particular piece that I did, I discuss how you deal with these type of situations without getting the police involved and without getting CPS involved. And I also hinted in um, the aspect of us being our very own Department of Violence Prevention. And with that being said, using the tools that I have learned from um, the Call and Eyes Academy is what helped me put this piece together. And um, yeah, thank you, Audra Candy Corn. And you can see Audrey Candicorn's beautiful revolutionary blogs on poormagazine.org. Zaire, can you give us like an excerpt, the first couple lines, the excerpt? Yes. Um, one moment, he's about to. You scholar Zaire, one of the students of the Jonah's Academy and a powerful warrior scholar. Go ahead. Okay. I'm Zaire, and in my neighborhood, West Oakland, carrying gun fear is normal. My brother got shot in the same hood where we live, so I really know how it is to have a family shot. In West Oakland, the little kids young with this is about um being in West Oakland and living in the jungle. And um, thank you for letting me um share this piece, Tiny. Ashay, well, you got to get the book. It's all the youth poverty scholars are in there and they're powerful, powerful warriors. Free, free. All right, all right. Oh, Tiny? Yes. Is okay. it okay if um if we read a piece for Amir? Well, I got to move on to, to Flea Flea, hon, but I want people to get, okay. definitely to get the book to read um, Amir, which is, who is another warrior, Kimo, Tibu, or Kiel, so many more. Thank you so much, Zaire. Okay. All okay. right. Wow. Thank you so much, Nephew. Thank you so much, Nephew Zaire. Hey, uh, relatives, it's a great blessing to be here with all of you uh, today. And I know our time is short. I know our time is short. Let me. Um... They can't hear us. They can't hear us. I mean, I've got one. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Will you, will you please unmute again? 
Okay, sorry about that. Hello, relatives. Thank you so much. Okay, I I, I know the time. I know the time. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, like many of my ancestors, I unequivocally reject the messages of the missionaries and their death sentences from Wananui. That means the Pacific. And I return to pray at the indigenous sacred site under the leadership. This is about the West Berkeley Shalmond, everybody, uh, here in, here in uh, Huchen or uh, the East Bay. Um, so this is just all the way at the end. Um, and then I just write, um, uh, we count them, we pick up the, the large pieces, we pick up the, the wounds is really what I'm saying. We pick up the wounds, all the pieces, all the names, the histories that were uh, criminalized and were stolen from us. So what we do is we pick them up, we put, okay, I see. <laughs> I'm reading from a totally different project that I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, well, um, yes. It worked. <laughs> and that too. And, and at the end here, we just say, uh, what we do, uh, our relatives, is we embrace and we mourn for, for those ancestors that were lost as part of a process of weaving the many broken pieces back together in a large fala or a mat uh, that will become the finest galoa or gift uh, that we give to the ancestors of the next seven generations. So thank you so much. Much love to everybody. You definitely have to learn more about West Berkeley Shell Mound. Again, as we talk about uh, Polish terror, we need to talk about colonial terror. And our relatives from Segorte Land Trust and Moananui and West Berkeley Shell Mound are taking back the stolen 5,700-year uh, sacred spaces and everybody needs to throw down support and lift up because we learn from our ancestors and we learn about this colonial terror every day and that's how we got where we are now. The Poli state don't keep you safe. Thank you, Fui Fui. Thank you, Karina. Um, I know we're running out of time. I know SF, we're supposed to be over by eight and I wanted to ask if Junebug is there. Is Junebug in the room? Junebug, I don't think she made it. Um, uh, and Nisa, are, can we like, we have three more minutes or we have to close out? Take all the time you need. Okay, all right. All right, I know if some people have to leave right at eight, we got you, but um, Leroy, do you wanna spit your piece? Is it in the book? Uh, are you gonna be out? Or you want to say any, any, any piece? Well, I have a piece, but if you want to find, we have to kind of do an excerpt of it. If you want to do a piece from the book, that's fine. I can read mine while you're finding yours. Yeah, I don't, I don't have the book here back, so you, you um, go. Okay, okay. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read a little. This is a, a message. It's a message out. Stop calling, stop stalling. Stop talking while more black and brown daughters and sons are falling. No, I mean stop enabling and colonizing a system that kills more than it ever cures our ills with roots in the original theft of Turtle Island meant to confuse our already confused mindsets. Got us all believing that Numbers like 911 means housed people are safe from houseless, that whites and lights are safe from our own embedded desire for wealth hoarding whiteness, that continuing to buy and sell, evict, foreclose, sweep and kick makes anyone safe from the myths about how to be safe and what is the way to handle fear and danger every day in a place already stolen, a land rife with murderous lies that keep getting told and told and sold like poison. That's an excerpt of the opening piece. And there's so much more poetry in there, including by my brother, D. Do you want to close this out with your words? I did that early. And that's in the book as well. Land liberation is also pro-life resistance. For as houseless people, we as poor people are demanding back our housing, being stolen from us, 
and try to build our own solutions. Which brings us to the flyer that's going to appear on the screen shortly. My. Stealing our last acre and our last view. No. So basically, no hope, six and rad. And for those of you who don't know, and you might think, well, how does this fit with pro life's terror? It's called the way that we are ending up on the street, the way that we are ending up houseless, living in our vans, living in street corners, bus benches, park benches, and anywhere we can hide, which even in a pandemic continues to happen. Uh, we are going to be doing this in San Francisco because in San Francisco they've implemented RAD uh, and No Hope 6. And it's the HUD gentrification plan. And we are all connecting those dots because they are connected. Also, don't forget about tomorrow's prison abolition workshop. And Maya will bring up the flyer for that as well. Imagining abolition beyond prisons, wars, and borders. And lastly, we always say for poor folks, our intellectual property is the only property we have. So if you've learned something tonight, please credit back to the poverty scholars uh, for the work and for the liberation. For those of you interested in knowing more, you can go to poormagazine.org. Also, the digital street currency is real. So follow us on Instascam and Facecrack and Twitter. Uh, and listen to Poor People's Radio. Um, we're going to ask Sister Pearl to close us out with a prayer. And also, again, thank you all for sitting with us, for listening to us, for putting up with our ghetto scholars on the digital streets, uh, and for more importantly, lifting up our ancestor victims of this polarized terror, because there it will never be safe in this polite state. Thank you, Tiny. Ashe. So this is an invocation for raising wind horse, drawing down the heaven energy, purification, and lifting up our spirits. The assembly of the three jewels, the three roots, gods and sages, the three protector, Ma, Satvas, Jayadeve, Padma Totring, and the Vidyadaras of India and Tibet, the glorious protector, Ganapati, with the divine armies of Dralas, the five patron gods, the great Bingesar, and so on, all those gods of the cosmic lineage who command coincidence, to all of those, I offer clouds of real and imagined good offerings. I offer you this cleansing offering with kindness. Please grant your blessings. Curses, spells, burial, sorcery, duns, obstructing spirits, obstacles, and so on. May all these signs of the weakening and corruption of wind horse be pacified. Strife, enmity, scandal, warfare, lawsuits, recurring calamity, and so on. Pacify all such obstructing discord. Multiply the power and strength of the virtuous wind horse, a four-legged miracle. Please accomplish the spiritual and temporal supreme in ordinary cities and without exception, whatever mind desires. Om Vajrasvati Mum, Om Mane Padme Hum, Om Vajrapani Hum, Om Aksha Malavara Yam, Om Ahum Vajra Guru Padma Siddhi Hum, Ha Ha, He He, Ho Ho, Sava Vijaya Siddhi Ho, Taksen Kindruk Jokhe, Gather all Sarva, Gather, Gather Ho, Rouse all our life virtue and glorious wind horse higher and higher. Om ye dharma he tu prabhava hetam tisham tatagato yavadat tisham chayanarola evam vadi ma shramana zoha. Om Adeo. Thank you. Now we always say change won't come from a savior, a pimp, or an institution. Change will only come from a poor people led revolution. Hey,
Love you, San Francisco Public Library. Love you, family and relatives. Love you, ancestors. And thank you for being here. Beautiful. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Hi. Love you all. Tomorrow, family. All right. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. Uh, library community, I put in the chat box the link to tonight's event. So many amazing resources. And thank you, Poor Press, Poor Magazine. Thank you all for being here. We're honored. And everyone, have a wonderful night. Try to sleep well. And let's do it again. We miss you.